Does the Vizio M-Series Quantum X TV hit a sweet spot or just not? We're about to find out. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is my review of the Vizio M-Series Quantum X. You know, I don't think it's an accident that this is the only new TV Vizio has introduced so far this year. I mean, the M-Series has for a few years now been Vizio's kind of core TV, right? It's not trying to break any brightness or color volume records, but it does aim to bring solid picture quality and a long list of desirable features down to a very attractive price. The audience for this TV, I think, is pretty huge. I'm talking about folks that want something decent and they're willing to pay a little more for it, but their eyes are gonna just glaze over when you start talking about mini LEDs and the nuts and bolts of nits. Anyway, we need to talk about the very interesting market position of this TV, talk about all the features you get for the price, definitely we're going to talk about performance and see if this TV might be right for you. And I'll just go ahead and say it now. This TV is worth shortlisting for a lot of people. Surprised? Yeah, me too. Stick around because you need to hear this, especially if you like to talk trash in the comments about how Hisense and TCL are just eviscerating Vizio these days. Vizio is back and back, y'all, so let's get into it. Speaking of comments, I've got one for you. How about we get to 1 million subscribers? We are so close, y'all. Pile on, tell your friends, get clicking down there. Let's push this thing over the line, and I promise you some very big things will come of it. Thanks for your support. Now, let's review this TV, shall we? So let's start with SmartCast because that's been my Vizio whipping post for a few years now and I know I'm not the only one. Well, here's the update. I still don't love it, but you know what? I don't hate it either. Why? Because it moves now, folks. I mean, the processor running this thing must have seen a serious upgrade because it is zippy as all get out. No lag when navigating or tapping in usernames and passwords. Apps load as quickly as they do on pretty much any other platform and no crashes. Not a single one over the course of the hours I've put into this TV. The layout? Well, it is what it is, which is to say it's not all that different from Samsung's Tizen or LG's WebOS, really. You get suggested content followed by suggested content and then your lineup of apps, which you can reorder as you like. There's also lots of free streaming live TV, if that's your bag. And of course, Chromecast is built right in. I only have two real gripes here. One is that Dolby Atmos is not supported on Disney Plus yet. It will be eventually according to Vizio, but I found that a bummer as I'm also testing the Vizio M-Series Elevate Dolby Atmos soundbar, and honestly, some of my favorite Atmos demos are on Disney Plus. It works fine on Netflix, HBO, Amazon, Apple TV Plus, and Vudu, just no Disney for now. Next, before I get into the measurement numbers, I wanna tell you what my experience with this TV has been like, because I'm really trying to think about the needs of the folks who will be interested in this TV. Folks who don't know their nits from their nanoparticles and are really just fine with that. Honestly, sometimes I wish I didn't get so caught up in the intersection of EOTF and gamma and you know what, I'm sorry, I'll process another time. What was I saying? Oh yeah, you know what? I left the meters in the bag and watched this TV for several hours. And by watched, I mean I just watched TV. I got a snack, turned off my brain and zoned out with the boob tube as we used to say when I was a kid. Kind of want to do that right now, as a matter of fact. But I did it to see if I could just enjoy watching content. And you know what? I did. I enjoyed it a lot. See, if this TV did anything especially poorly, I wouldn't have been able to relax. There's some stuff I just can't see past. If the screen was especially dirty, it would have bugged me. If the bright colors were obviously way, way off, it would have gotten stuck in my craw. If the blooming was abysmally bad, I would have shut the whole show down and drop kicked this son of a... Excuse me. <clears throat> anyway, nothing about this TV set me off. It looked good. I enjoyed myself, and I think most folks will feel the same. But I'll get to the key picture quality takeaways in a moment. First, let's dig into some data. You know what that means. Numbers for Knit Nerds. You know, I'm thinking about some numbers for Knit Nerds merch. What do you think? Drop me a comment down below. Okay, so I used the calibrated, not calibrated, dark mode in SDR and HDR and did Dolby Vision calibrated too, since I wanted to give the TV a decent shot at peak brightness measurements. Before I messed around with two point white balance, the TV managed right around 1000 nits peak with a 10% window and 600 nits 
full screen. That's respectable, especially considering the cost of the TV. And I'll also point out that along with the TV's black levels, that's good enough to consider true HDR. No cheating involved. The white balance though was way off, way too much blue, even with the color temp set to warm. And because Vizio's adjustments happen in tiny, tiny increments, it took what seemed like big adjustments to get to the D65 white point. But really Vizio just offers really granular adjustments. So no big deal really. Anyway, I calibrated SDR, HDR, and Dolby Vision, white point only. And while I got to D65, no problem, I'm afraid color accuracy did not measure especially well. Errors averaged around Delta E of six, which if you know, is into the visual range, but you need to have a frame of reference to know they're off. And I'll point out that at no time when I was just watching this TV for fun, did I ever have any complaints about the color on this TV. Motion? Well, by default, even in the calibrated modes, this TV had two points of de-judder and one point of de-blur on in the motion settings menu. And I can see why. Because without that, you are getting some pretty noticeable stutter when you have static vertical elements panning horizontally on screen. It's significant enough that I think most folks will just have to deal with a little soap opera effect just a bit in order to get rid of that. So I'm not thrilled about that, but we still need to talk about where this TV sits in the market. Overall processing though, not bad. It dispatches with banding a bit better than I expected and cable slash broadcast content look fine as long as the signal was decent. Nothing to be upset about there. So yeah, MQX gets a passing grade. Overall, the picture quality on this TV is pretty decent. There is a bit of blooming around bright backlighting next to dark areas Areas. It's actually easier to see when you have a muted gray background like this YouTube loading screen than it is when you have a jet black background. And while gray slides show we have a little dirty screen effect, I never saw this when watching real content, except maybe like hockey, less with golf. So I'm not really upset about the dirty screen on this one. No, really, this TV looks pretty great, especially since it doesn't have mini LED backlighting or even a ton of dimming zones. In fact, I'd say that you can't spend the same money on an LG, Samsung, or especially Sony TV and get anywhere close to picture quality as good as you'll find on the MQX. So it's definitely firmly planted in the high value realm. But yeah, then there's Hisense and TCL, right? So how does the MQX compare to TVs from those brands? Well, the MQX here compares well to the Hisense U7H. The Hisense, I think, may get a little brighter. I'll find out soon because I just got one, but something tells me backlight control will be pretty similar. And in the TCL land, this TV compares most closely to the TCL 5 series, and we haven't seen the new 5 series come out yet, so it's a bit hard to make a comparison there, but something tells me the 5 series is gonna sit a bit lower on the performance spectrum than the MQX here. So the Vizio MQX bridges the gap between the TCL 5 series and TCL 6 series, and it goes head to head with the Hisense U7H series, actually undercutting it by a bit in terms of price, depending on what's on sale and when it's on sale. Oh, and I almost forgot, the TV is FreeSync Premium certified with one 4K 120 hertz port in addition to the eARC port. And as far as I can tell, it does a really solid job with gaming in general, although you'll have to keep those picture quality and motion elements that I mentioned in mind when deciding whether this is a good gaming TV for you. So yeah, the MQX kind of has to be on a short list if you're looking for a TV that comes in well under $1,000, especially if you wanna have some money to spend on a soundbar. Speaking of which, the M-Series Elevate here, it's an awesome companion. So Vizio, nice job. I like the MQX. It's a solid TV, and I think it deserves to land in a lot of homes this year. A video file, darling, it is not. But for most folks, I think it's gonna do the trick. Thanks so much for watching everyone. Has this restored any of your interest in Vizio TVs? Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And here's two other videos I think you might like.